Here we go. <clears throat> Hey, everybody, welcome intro? back to the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Satoshi Sean. Glad you're here. Glad to be hanging out with you. Um, have my good super buddy, Litecoin Lisa, who I love and can't say enough good things about. We have my favorite YouTuber right now. Um, Where? Yeah. <laughs> I follow this guy. You should follow this guy. We'll turn in the description to uh, his social media outlets and his YouTube channel. Um, like I, I can't say anything else. That he's my favorite YouTuber right now. Um, Man, thank I watch you. everything he puts out. Uh, he posts like two, three times a day sometimes. Hardest working guy in, in on YouTube right now, I think. Used to be BitBoy. He's slacked off, you know, but... Uh, we still it's, love it, boy. He does not work as hard as he used to, but he deserves all the success that he has because he yeah. needs to work so much. Um, but good to have you here, Economic Ninja. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Lisa, you What are you too? snapping for? You, you That's his me. thing. That's his. You triggered me. Oh, my goodness. That's, this is over. You'd be shocked at how many people get triggered at a snap I, and honestly, a point these days. It's hard for me to believe that. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome, actually. We're, we're separating the wheat from the chaff right now. We're literally mm -hmm. able to see who we should be friends with, who we should be business partners with, and who we shouldn't be. And if something like that gets you, <laughs> trust me, there's way yeah. more things in this world that should offend you. We can... I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say this. I really shouldn't. Um, it's it. so bad, but Lisa knows. So I, I my girlfriend is a younger uh, girl, and uh, she, the other day uh, she texts me. I was like, "Hey, good morning, princess," and she goes, "Well, it's, it's Prince. Oh, Lord. It's Prince today." Sorry, she can't <laughs> watch this because she'll be really pissed. <laughs> But I wow. said, uh, I said, well, what? you're not allowed to call her she. I said, huh? For that, and she said, maybe uh, that's over now. Today. And she said, but well, you know, I'm gender fluid. Today, wow. I'm a man. And then I thought about it. I'm like, that means I'm gay. You just made me gay. <laughs> that's not fair. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. Well, so, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't think the interview would go this direction, but let's let's roll with it. Um, this day and age is crazy, yeah. and this is the end of an empire. This has been the same way as empires build up and empires collapse. Uh, Dude, stop, we all stop right end there, stop the same right there. Nobody huh? knows that except for me. I'm the guy that always makes that. Every empire that's fallen, you could see it in the art. You could see yep. it in the literature. Babylon. It's all gender that's bending. Right. It goes a certain way, and then the empire falls. Nobody that's ever right. talked about that. That's right. People want their ears tickled. They want to. They they enjoy. They they make celebrities out of their chefs. Uh, they uh, their blood sports get bloodier. I mean, it's just it's absolutely insane. And and this is exciting because when you can see it and you can call it out, um, don't fight it. Take advantage of it. Quite frankly. So to take advantage of it, we we're gonna have this be a ninja style uh, interview. So it'll be short and sweet, and we want to get right to the meat of it. Where should people be right now to take advantage of? Also, it? the first I wanted to go over though is something that you say that I want everyone to, before we go any further, it's this mantra that I've adopted. It's to to know what's going on and to not be scared, but be, be prepared. prepared. Right, and that's it. You, if you're prepared, you know what's coming, and it's scary. What, what yeah. we're in right now, we're, not even what's coming. What we're at right now is scary. Um, but it, it if is. you're prepared, it's not as scary. Yeah. So I'll answer both of those, uh, the question and the comment at the same time. So first off, when you're prepared, you're not scared, right? However, uh, using fear as um, fuel to, to put a fire under your butt to do something about where you are in life right now is excellent. I use the example of Noah building the ark. He built that ark for 100 years and he was there banging away almost every day uh, because of fear that if he didn't do it, he was going to be part of that disaster. But that's not and biblical. That is, I guess it is biblical yeah. in your explanation, mm -hmm. but if you go with the fruits of the spirit, when God speaks to you, it's peace, love, joy, gentleness, goodness, kindness, long suffering. And when you are being led not by God's word, it is those other things, fear, doubt, jealousy, all those things. So I, oh, how, how do you reckon Perfect. that? So it actually says in the Bible, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And that is a very important passage to remember. And the reason why is because when you have the fear of the Lord, you know that when he says something, it's going to happen. And okay. Noah knew. He goes, look, there's a flood coming. 
I've got a plan for you. This is how you're going to do it. Even down to what type of wood you're going to use to build that arc. A very detailed plan. And he didn't have to say it. He knew, Noah knew that that flood was coming. And if he didn't do what the Lord said, and every time there was anything in the Bible that came across as a warning, like, hey, this is going to come. A famine is coming. Well, you can store up food. You know, if you didn't store food, you're going to starve. And so the fear of the Lord, knowing that when he says something, it's going to happen, that motivates you to act. Now, you can uh, be led in peace, but the problem is uh, people don't have a good understanding of fear. You know, the truth is, in this world, everything, we are motivated by fear. Most people, um, right. and the reason why my channel has done so well, is I've been able to give up a little bit of fear. I still have fear all the time, but the fear of looking right in front of the camera, the fear of saying the right thing or not screwing up my words, right? I actually went the opposite direction and said, look, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have a whiteboard. I'm going to have cardboard. If I misspell something, I'm leaving it. And quite frankly, I'm going to let go of fear. And that's what's translating and uh, where a lot of people are feeling, uh, uh, let's say, good about my channel because uh, we all have problems. You know, social media is a perfect example of that. Everyone wants to show you their amazing life, their vacations, their food. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I don't care where you're eating tonight, right? But it's fear. It's fear of how are people going to think about, what are think people going to think about me? So even on that small level, we, we're uh, run by fear. And what I want to tell people is like, let's talk about real fear. And this is what Lisa was asking. Where do we start? The channel took a complete um, uh, 180 about 30 days ago. I've been warning about like why it's supposed to be important to, to buy food and be prepared that way, but then also buy precious metals. There's also a place for a cryptocurrency in that, right? Even in the current situation. But now the 180 degrees shift is we are literally going to have a famine. We're going to have it soon. And it's not only because of Russia and Ukraine. China's about to move into Taiwan. That is going to make things very, very serious. No one and, talked about that but you. You've been talking about that for a couple of weeks. And it's not yeah. – no no one brought that up. And it was uh, – it's happening. It really is yeah. happening. I wanted to, hit, to ask you something on this, on the famine mm -hmm. thing. And, and this is something me and Lisa have been going around – and kind of, kind of looking at and investigating for for a, a bit now, I like to look at kind of the reason why things are being talked about, and everyone's talking about there's going to be food shortages and famines and blah blah blah, and the narrative that's being pushed, the stories are being pushed, are, are interesting to me. Um, even like like the rich dad, poor dad guy, forget forget his, his name, Kiyotaki. Kiyotaki. Yeah, he came out and said, you can't eat gold, you can't eat Bitcoin, you can't eat silver. But uh, I think it's time for people to look at adding cans of tuna, cans of beans to their portfolio yeah. because of what's coming. So everyone is talking about this uh, food shortages and all these this horror that's coming. And uh, we, we, they, they're, they're talking about the dead cattle in mm -hmm. Kansas and the dead sheep like it's a huge, huge deal. And um, when the when the the food plants were catching fire, it's it's part of a huge, huge deal that, that's, that's going to hurt food uh supply chain yeah. and then a friend of ours the public awakening said i wonder how many food processing plants there are and there's twenty thousand plus mm -hmm. so 40 or 80 it's not a big deal i looked up how many so when, when the the cattle thing happened i was like oh man there's gonna be a shortage on cattle and prices of meat's gonna go up more than it already has for god's sake yeah. um but there was like eight million head in kansas alone so two thousand is like a half of a half oh, or whatever percent so, but this narrative is being pushed hard. So my question is, why is the mainstream, everybody pushing that this is going to happen when there's not a lot of proof that it is? There is, is it going to be prices? And then are they trying to make us eat the bugs? There's so many avenues that could be nefarious or could be even nice. So I want to get your take on it. Why do you think they're pushing that so hard? Okay, perfect. So first off, it wasn't just 2,000 head of cattle. It was 12,000, right? The first head, 10,000 went down, then 2,000. And you're right. Uh, when you look at the grand scheme of things, the percentage basis, you're like, this isn't a big deal. But let's talk about the food processing plants. I'm a firefighter in California. I've been a firefighter for like 23 years. And um, the Taylor Farms processing facility, uh, the largest produce processing facility in the nation, burned to the ground. It was in my uh, response area, actually. Uh, came down to the chief and said, Hey, Taylor Farms is on fire. And he goes, Yeah. And I'm like, Are we going to prep the guys and let them know what's going on? He goes, Oh, we probably won't get called. I'm like, Well, we've been called to that area before. And there's this sort of like lethargic, eh, we probably won't go. Started looking into it. And uh, I go, This is weird that they would burn down, right? Well, here, let's give an example. Yes, that's one out of the number you said. It's not that big, but it's the biggest one. 
And every time one processing plant goes down, that's that much less capacity we have in this nation, right? Because those cows that died, given an example, those are calories that are going to be eaten, right? Well, every time a herd goes down, that's that fewer calories that the world has, which also um, runs the price of cattle or pigs up. Like we just talked about that pig processing facility mm -hmm. for pork in California. Again, largest in the nation, right? And then mm -hmm. I think the third largest in the nation, same company yeah, is pulling out. They actually declared a state of uh, emergency. For financial emergency, a declaration of uh, financial uh, disaster, actually, because they need state funds. And that was um, done because it was what the largest... Uh, employer in that area, that region. But what you have to think about is the bigger picture. So your number one and number three pork processing plant is now gone. Well, there's lots of others. Here's the problem. All these companies are already at capacity. You can't just double capacity. Um, you have, you've already built out your warehouse, your facilities per, you know, the, pretty much the amount of business you get in and get out. Well, what's going to happen is the price of pre, you know, packaged pork at the grocery stores in the next 90 days are about to start rising up exponentially. And then the price of hogs are going to collapse on the futures exchange, the stock market. Why? Because all of the farmers that had hogs that were going to these places now are going, crap, where do we send them to? Right. And so we have to look at these bigger things. And like you said, there's been what? 80 of these processing plants that have burned to the ground in the I think last it's like 104 year. now or something like that. 104. Okay. Now let's talk about chips. Uh, Texas had a deep freeze and took out a chip uh, manufacturer back in what, 2020, 20, yeah, it was 2020, 2021. And then ironically, about 30 days later, 60 days later, uh, the second largest uh, chip manufacturer in the world in Japan burnt to the ground. Well, it wasn't a big deal when Texas went down. We didn't see a chip supply shortage. But then after Japan went down, oh, now we got a shortage because there's other chip manufacturers. But the problem is you've just now taken out so much capacity. Talking about computer chips. Yep. We were talking about food, I was chips. thinking about potato chips myself. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> problem. So my point being is that every time you take out another plant, it takes a certain amount of time for that information to hit the Wall Street and then hit Main Street. And so as I'm reporting these things, I'm telling people you're literally getting an image into the future of about what's about to happen between price and shortages. Because just because there's, let's say, 1,000, 1,200, whatever facilities that process food in this nation – it doesn't mean that if, if we if we lost like eight or ten percent of those, or let's say, we the other ones can't just take up the extra capacity. They're not tooled up, which is an industry term. They don't have the right machinery to do what those other ones that have just been destroyed did. So it's going to have some serious effects. And then you have world leaders all around the world. Our president, we've got uh, French presidents, so we got all these presidents and world leaders coming out and saying, "There's a famine coming. There's a shortage coming. It's going to be real." Now they want to blame the boogeyman right now, which is Ukraine and. Uh, Russia, but the sad thing is the China and Taiwan thing, that's real. That is no joke. It is coming. It will happen this year. China's already said, we're going to do this. We're either doing it by force or well, you know, nice. You know about the, they, they, they flew in yesterday and uh, Taiwan scrambled and sent out jets to meet them. Um, yeah. So it started, that was a big thing for me because that was real. Saber rattling. On, on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And that happens all the time. Um, however, we're seeing even bigger saber rattling with the U.S. supplying weapons to both Ukraine and Taiwan. And we're instigating. See, Jared Salente said it famously, um, so I can't take this, but he says, when all else fails, they take you to war. And all throughout history, uh, we've seen this, World War I, World War II, whenever and there was- cursed, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. And the, the point yeah. is that we have a time right now that we know we're going to war. And so I want people to be prepared and going back to what Lisa said, you know, where do you start right now? It's food because yes, you can eat Bitcoin. You can eat um, gold, but that's not the narrative that people are talking about that they should be talking about. The fact is you don't want to be forced into a position to sell your gold, to sell your Bitcoin at, at massively hyperinflated food prices. Mm -hmm. Why not go buy it now? And then not only that, when you you have a clear mind and you're sitting at home and you're watching the news and you're watching cities burn down because that is going to happen. When food hits 40% of the average uh, person's income, right, the cost of food, that's when you take to the streets. We learned that from the Arab Spring. That was the most the most recent. I mean, we've seen Turkey. We've seen Venezuela food uh, riots. But this is going to be a uh, shoot. We've seen it in Iran, all kinds of places, actually. But the mm -hmm. Arab Spring was a real big rise. And I believe we're going to see that in our country. And I think it's very important where people go, no, nah, there's no way it could happen in this country. I'm like, well, we saw Minneapolis burn down. So back to the tipping point is the food at 40%. Yes. Yeah. It, throughout history, that has been the mathematical uh, like key number right there is 40%. 
Um, that's like, it's getting insane. You can't deny both food and gasoline prices. You made a really good point that I think people need to get uh, people today because we, my, my kids are especially, they're, they're, they're guilty of this. Everyone today seems to, I don't care about it if it doesn't bother, if it doesn't, you know, involve mm-hmm. me. I'm not into politics because it doesn't affect me. I don't care about basically anything unless it affects me. And you said, oh, the, you know, the pork plant burned down. Even if there's no pork, I don't care. I don't eat pork. But all the people that do are going to come and try to take whatever you eat. So that they're going to go for beef. They're going to go for chicken, whatever fish if they can't have that there's they still exist yeah there's their, their need still exists so they're going to come for whatever it is that you're consuming yeah that, that was a very powerful point to me because you can't bury your head in the sand when it comes to to so much because even if it doesn't directly impact you and you can kind of look at it that way it will impact you in the in the short future because those people are still there yeah, I agree. And and it, it, you don't want to ignore this because this is the greatest opportunity to build generational wealth in the next 100 years. I'm not just this 100 year cycle. We're following the Depression of 1920 and the Great Depression perfectly to the year right now. However, this time, this roaring 20s, it's not going to be a 10 year. That's why the whole Agenda 2030 thing came out. Their plan was to take it down at 2030. It's happening faster. And they want a slow burn because slow burns as you collapse slowly and things melt up like the Roaring Twenties, people don't realize what's happening. It's the boiling frog syndrome. Boiling frog. However, this time they're losing uh, losing a grip of this fast because of the sheer amount of money around the world that was printed in the last three years. <clears throat> and it is going to be really fast. And they don't want that because like right now, there's never been a time in history like this where we could get on these different uh social media platforms and declare the truth Even yeah there's so many things that you could say and i i said today on the show we were on a bunch of times this time it's different because of this this has never happened you yep. know um with with the amount of information that people have access to immediately um all over the world it's yeah. the the speed at which everything happens is much faster now yes. um but that's why I want to kind of get your take and, and on building the, this, you know, this huge wealth. Uh, what, cause you, you, you mentioned credit a lot mm-hmm. at, at how, how that is important in, um, in, in what you're going to do when, uh, when everything does kind of hit the fan. Yeah. I'm going to um, buy everything. What, what do you, uh, what basic kind of framework can you give people right now to start preparing not just for the fall, but preparing to uh, to take advantage of it and to, uh, and to yeah. build. Great question. I got fired up on a video. You're going to see a preview of it right now because I'm about to get pissed off. Somebody gave me a comment and said, you know, you're not going to need your credit score when everything's burning to the ground. I'm like, you're a complete moron because people thought that during the Great Depression, it's the end of the world. We're going to die. They said that during the Black Plague. We're all dying. Yeah. Then we have the Renaissance. We have everything is a cycle, right? But yet for some reason, a certain uh population of human beings and these are the ostriches ignorance is bliss stick my head in the sand i'm gonna hide everything's gonna be the end you know run for your your caves if the world since the days jesus was on earth has been built on debt and death really it's a stranglehold around your neck to keep you poor and and that's the thing we have this false facade of the middle class right now and trust me there's an attack on the middle class right now they want two classes not three they want just poor and rich right and uh, one thing you could do is protect your credit score. Now, how I say you do that, is first off, don't get in any stupid debt. Try and pay off the debt right now, the student debt. The uh, And there's a reason why student debt is not allowed to be discharged during Biden's bankruptcy. Biden's taking care of that for everyone. So Who's what? Biden's Biden? taking care of that for everyone. Man, that was... Oh, man, you're really going to piss me off. Do I need to, do I need to like, hold my, my Biden thing? <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. Sorry, you're not pissing yeah. me off. I'm joking. But yeah, yeah. it does. Former vice president. Because Former vice president. That, that's the Marine Antoinette moment. You might as well throw, slap a tiara on the guy and put him in a dress and go, let them eat cake, right? And the let them eat cake part is, I'm going to forgive a little bit of your debt. They're not going to do it. They're not going to discharge his debt. What you're, what you're describing the tiara, there was a, a Clinton Epstein uh, night out, actually. Uh, yeah, well, the yeah, tiara and a dress. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I do remember that photo. But my point being is that um, they're, they're fooling you. Uh, that is the second largest asset on the books of the federal government. 
the interest that comes in. Do you think for one second, anyone that sits there and goes, they're going to forgive my debt. Oh, that's just like them saying, hey, the IRS, let's close the doors. We don't need any income tax. We're good. No, don't be an idiot. And well, in Oklahoma, um, that was just passed. Uh, the Supreme Court passed that the uh, IRS is not allowed to uh, tax the Muscogee Indians and several other Native Americans. Some of that's going down in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's uh, what, what, what it reminds me of is how, how politicians are always out there talking about how there are four term limits and they want term limits and term, but they, they, they're not. Because they, they wouldn't be there. But all they have to do is not run. Okay, you know, what they're doing right now years. is just like what the Federal Reserve is doing right now. The reason why the Federal Reserve and the governors are out talking in the press every day is because we're collapsing. And that's mm -hmm. what they want. They want to appease you. And so yes. they go, hey, like what they said in December, hey, we're going to get on inflation in three months. No, dork. <laughs> Raise the interest rate now. Well, no, we're going to do it in three months. You want to know why? It's because psychologically, they just put a Band-Aid on the stock market. And that's what they do. They talk. Talk is cheap. They know this thing's coming down, so they're out there. Everything's good. But very few people remember, but I was an investor during that time. I was screaming at the TV at Ben Bernanke, that moron, in 2005, where he goes, well, Maria, uh, I don't think you understand. I don't I don't agree with your premise that the housing market is collapsing because it just it just simply can't happen. And and it, he was completely wrong. And what's even funnier than that is I get a bunch of comments on my stuff saying, Maria, uh, I was talking about Maria Bartiromo being on CNBC, talking to Ben Bernanke. I've got tons of comments. Um, Ninja, Maria Bartiromo does not work for CNBC. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, uh, uh, you, you realize people have multiple jobs. And, and that was a long time ago. Like, I'm not joking. Back then, that was what's happening. But people like, rather than hearing the words come out of my mouth, they're going, no, you're wrong. She doesn't work for CNBC. No, I get that all the time where they're like, is this, this article is from six months ago. And I'm like, and what is your point? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, what happened? Oh, I want today's. Well, so you want the rhetoric and the lies of today? Mm -hmm. Why don't we yeah. deal with what happened six months ago? And you go, oh my gosh, it happened. Yeah. Finally, get there faster. Yeah. You haven't and, heard of Sorry, yeah. you got me fired up. I need some more coffee. No? Yeah. Oh, you look like you need at least one more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I get that all the time. People are like, you know, has he been drinking or is that guy, you know, needs less coffee? And I'm, my wife will sit there and go, he hasn't had coffee today. And no, he hasn't had a beer yet. And, and it's funny because that's just me. I have that energy. It's definitely good. And it's good for the channel. It's good for the people. We yeah, love what you're you sharing. Know, the cardboard thing. I think that's one thing people always talk about with my channel is just that it's like real, you know, it's yeah. just genuine. I'm going to, I'm going to go grab something real quick for you. <laughs> Hold on. I'm coming Surprise back. from Ninja. Yeah, what will is, it this be? Is important stuff. This is world changing stuff. So I don't know if you guys know this. The cardboard is, is a real deal because there's some really fancy people out on YouTube. And I learned really quickly that they're they are not what you think. They were not investors during the last crash. Um, they haven't made what they tell you they've made. And um, we've had some interesting run in. So this is where the cardboard came from. So I'm like, if you got a whiteboard, I got cardboard. So you guys have heard about my art, right? So I just got to show you once my pizza because I use pizza boxes. <laughs> This is a real thing. This is going to be an NFT one day. We're waiting until NFTs crash and I get a better deal on the bids. You can get a buy-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and then Ninja on the Water. I got this from a gentleman on the street corner. It's a very, I, I think we're, we're going places with this. This is actually original. It's not a picture of a cartoon monkey. Okay. Sorry. You know, you're totally full off the rails, though. guys. Got to have some fun. But, uh, I started my channel because I, I was, I was you know, get, I got into crypto and, was like you know super into crypto YouTube, but there was all these projects that were like amazing that no one would talk about, and I just didn't I didn't know that they were all paid to talk about the ones they were talking about. I didn't get that. So I, I and my kids have a, a YouTube channel, a gaming channel. So I got this free screen capture software. I wasn't even on. I didn't have a camera, and I just started talking about uh, Space Chain. Uh, Jeff Garzik. Mm -hmm. Could be Satoshi. He's yep. he was part of it. They they were already had satellites in space, with with yep. this uh, uh, operating system. Amazing uh, project. I went and it's like no one's talking about this. This is like really you know world changing stuff. And within like two hours, this the CEO messaged me on Twitter. I'm like, that's not you. You're not the CEO. I you, know, and it's not how this works. And it's like, oh, I saw your video. It's uh, very good. And it blew my mind, yeah. but it, I mean, I'll talk, Lisa and I both know a lot of YouTubers who don't like traders who talk about trading all the time, who don't trade, yeah. um, you know, people that talk about crypto who are not even 
that invested in crypto. Um, yeah. So it is. And then we're at these meetups with them and they're like, oh, my PR firm handles this and that. And I'm like, you're so what? a lot of disingenuousness. I think if you are genuine, people can really see that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you guys want, I'll just go off for a second on crypto. And the reason why I don't talk about it that much, my channel, if that's what you, uh, yes, you guys I would like, like to know why. What? Yeah, I'm the, go off. Okay. Tell me. So I've got a pretty good background in crypto. I've been a miner. I've staked. Um, I We've all been miners, program. man. Then we yeah. grow up. Well, I mean, to the effect that you're, you're putting solar panels on your house and you're heating your house up and it's super loud, you know, running all that stuff. That was fun. Um, you know, did beta testing for certain, you know, platforms and stuff. This is what I found. Lots of, lots of scammers out there. I, and what really scared me is when I started a YouTube channel, watching the scammers come out of the woodwork. And what's really scary is that these kind of scams, the, the theft is on a whole new level because these are thieves that hide in the dark. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of these kip, crypto scams are literally the shiny lure and they attract people. They give them their money. It might run for a little bit, but the plan is it's like a pyramid scheme. There's going to be a day where it ends. Mm -hmm. And unlike investing in stocks where you can, you know, you do have, and I don't like regulation. I want to get that straight, right? And you were in the same boat on this. Yeah. yeah, totally don't like regulation. However, right now with stocks, um, there is some due diligence that goes in and people have to, you know, their faces are out there right? The, the CEO's face is out there. You can go and research his background. With crypto projects, you know, not all of them, they're they're out in the front in the media saying, hey, this is my, my name. This is my company. I, this is what I did beforehand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like love to do those little, little projects where there's not a, you know, there's all, they see these spikes. They know nothing about volume and trading and how that works. And there are people literally making a lifestyle, making literally $50,000 a month on YouTube, like pretending, like you said, to trade uh, cryptos, things like that. And they're running people into a graveyard financially. That's what's really scary. Yeah. If you also, saw, if you, I mean, uh, just my own story, I was hacked yeah. like a year and a half ago. Uh, and there, there was like, I mean, they stole, you know, thousand now hundreds, like $120,000. But at the time it was like 15, but yeah. still, I had no, what do I do? I can't call the police. I can't, call, you know, if I called the police, I'd have to explain probably for half an hour what it is, give it. And then they would say, I don't know, you know? So there was like, when it comes to the scams and, and the theft, it's not just that there's a, and that's the only thing I want regulation for. Yeah. I don't want to say that just to say I want regulation, but it's some kind of just basic protection. You, and you really can't have one without the other problem. problem. All we have is buyer beware. Yeah. Well, you got things like, I'll give an example. I, I've talked to people out this before. It's called a YubiKey. Have you guys ever seen one of these? Mm. Okay. It's an RFID chip, right? And it's really pretty amazing because uh, like for Coinbase, Gemini, Binance, everything in, in the internet, Google, Facebook, you can register a YubiKey and you have it. And when you log in with your uh, your username and password, you still cannot get in without slipping this either into a drive and then having human touch, not a fingerprint, but human touch that feels the warmth of your finger and activates. Um, or if it goes up against your phone, it vibrates. Point being is that the thief could have your username and your password, um, but they if they don't have this in their hand, that's that next piece of the puzzle it's 40 dollars. and people when we talk about buyer beware that is what people need they need that education to know literally as simply as securing your gmail account or your uh facebook account that's mm -hmm. like those those integral signs are the pieces of the puzzle when you're getting into crypto because that's usually the first line of defense getting into your account and so it's very important people know these kind of things that is amazing actually it's yeah. super cheap. I mean, um, you throw it away, it could burn up in a fire, and then you have a second one that's already registered, and you just pop it in. It's so simple and so cheap, but most people don't understand how this stuff works. I think, and like what we were talking about, the, the, the availability of information, a lot of people, I've noticed, the past two years, have really been waking up to what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, me and Lisa are really big in education, you know, just just trying to wake people up and, and educate people and 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 learn them on on how things work because people don't i was a financial advisor uh -huh. and i didn't really get how the monetary system worked the the evils of it yeah. um and i was I, I lived in the belly of the beast and then when you when you put your toe in crypto when you look down the rabbit hole you learn so much about the world just how things really work 
Um, now, were you a fiduciary? No, it's insurance and uh, okay, uh, and uh, mutual funds. Okay, you know, like low level stuff. Yeah, because I mean, when you, if you don't mind me jumping in, when you want to talk about the belly of the beast, the financial advisor realm is literally that. And the reason why I say it is, our world is built in a way where it's a human emotion that is taking over. I am known as, in the eyes of the IRS, a real estate professional because of how much time I, uh, or I used to be, into real estate, right? But I wasn't, at the time, a real estate agent. And so people, I would talk about the real estate market in 2006. It's collapsing. I'm liquidating my portfolio and closing up my business. And they would laugh, roll their eyes, and say, well, you're not a real estate agent. You don't know. You're not a professional. Mm -hmm. And this world with, with financial advisors, I don't remember, was it 80 hours you have to put to get your certificate to be a financial advisor? Are and like for your series seven or. Yeah, I don't remember uh, the different series licenses you need. But uh, the point is, is that you you don't even know how to, you know, run yourself, out, get yourself out of your checkbook or, or balance mm -hmm. it, let alone, you know, build wealth. But you can be advising people. And that's what's really scary this day. I mean, and that's what's great about YouTube because you can pretty much see the fakes from the the real people after time because time always tells, right? The truth always comes out. But man, you go into a bank and most of these people that work at banks, they have no concept of how the financial system works. Not at all. Not at all. Um, but I don't, and I told, I've told Lisa this, I don't think we're going to wake anyone else up. Like I think the time, you know, you, you can talk to your red in the face. The people that you get through to, You've already got through. It's done. That yeah. what what wakes people up now is seeing something, something that affects them. When people saw what happened in Canada, when people saw what happened with the helicopter money, that's when a lot of people. But you plant the seed, because I had so many people coming to me and messaging me like, "Hey man, remember when you said this stuff? You know, a thousand times. Mm -hmm. You're actually right. I understand it now. I got it. Did you yeah. know? And I'm like, dude, don't tell me. Did I know? I'm. I told you that same thing. You know, 18 months ago. But uh, like my, my nephews and other, they're, they're, they're like, oh, I understand now. Oh, I get it. So, you know, people put all this money into uh, GoFundMe and then they just didn't give it to them. You yeah. Know, you know, they're so, I understand peer to peer now. I understand why that's important. I understand why this is important. The problem and is the pain's going to come when we've been telling them about bail ins oh. and warning them about bail ins and, and it's going to happen and they're going to go, what? That, but that's my money. Yeah. No, you signed that little thing. People that said don't even know when they become insolvent, thing. they can yeah. make themselves whole with your money. And, and that's when the pain's going to come, I think. And Dodd Frank is what brought that in. And that actually happened right after the Great Recession started. And I have a friend that came to me, just lost his job with uh, LA City Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and he says, If I would have listened to you five years ago, I was telling him about this event. A lot of people are going to get sick and it's going to be bad and get ready for this. And he said, and I told him about Bitcoin, 500 bucks. And he watched me for years, laughed. You know, he's a real estate professional. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, if I'd have listened, I would have been a multimillionaire. But not only that, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in. Well, same thing in 2008, when we were buying gold, um, you know, at what, 700 bucks, and it rises up to, you know, 1,200, I'm sorry, 2,000 bucks. Yeah. And at that time, real estate falls by 30%. That's mm -hmm. that move. That's when you want to sell your precious metals and buy real estate. And uh, no, you're not going to, Sean, you're not going to be able to warn everyone. But the thing is, I really believe that we are going to catch a million people, a million people. And it sounds funny, but that's all we need. The army doesn't have to be that big. The army has to be well um, equipped with knowledge and, and finances. We only need 3%. Yeah. The, 3% uh, is the, the elite the, mindset. 1% is the actual elite with the money right the now. The revolution, the you know, American revolution, we only have 3% of the... Uh, of the actual population that was like hundred percent, you know, on it. And then, you know, it's still most people, even during the, the, the revolution, they just wanted to, you know, live their lives and, and, and pay their taxes and leave me alone. So it doesn't take Brandon circuses. It, it just, yeah. Uh, it, but it, it just takes a small amount to stand up because, yeah. because the ruling class, which we still have that is so few, yeah. you know, it's so few. And the majority of people are just apathetic and don't care. So if enough people do stand up and just say, no, yeah. we're not going to do this. We're going to do it the, the, the right way. Yeah. Um, that's all you need. That, that is all you need. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And then, and you get out of the system of debt and death and you, you walk into God's money, you walk into cryptos, be ready for more crypto crash. I'm not buying until we see Bitcoin at 12,000, 10,000. And if it doesn't happen, 
cool. It'll go the other direction. And mm -hmm. I still have what I, I haven't been selling. You know, that's another thing. People freak out because something didn't happen in their time frame. And I go, you know what? The world's a lot bigger than your time frame. So you need to, to play those averages. So you either buy the dips and this one's going to be nice because derivatives are attached to it. So the stock market's going to help take down crypto. But eventually people will see it for what it's worth. True decentralized blockchain is exactly that. Oh, wait, you can't just print it up because they're going to hyperinflate our currency. They're going to bring us into a CBDC. It is not decentralized. They are lying. This stupid crypto that's out of New York is a complete, this blockchain, it's not what people think. And so, yeah, Bitcoin's going to take off and there'll be a day where Bitcoin's millions of dollars and Litecoin's up and Digibyte's up. And uh, I love it when people sit there and go, well, how's your Digibyte doing? I'm like, I'm just fine. Don't worry. Yeah. You don't you worry. <laughs> just stand by. It's Hold my beer. Watch sale. this. Yeah, it's on yeah. sale. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't have a lot of time either, yeah, guys. I know we're hitting that. You that said you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're limited on time, which I'd like to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any, anytime, anytime you want to come on, we, we can hang out because I, I mean, I'm, I'm watching you anyways. <laughs> you want to talk no, to well, me. I appreciate right? it. And I'll share this whenever it hits your channel, send it to me. I'm going to share it on my channel because it's important that we uh, build up other channels. There's a lot of people that don't want to play nice with other people. And that is not how you get growth. That is not and, how you get. And, and that was part of what I wanted to kind of get across to you about this. This, Even if you're, if you're just putting a message out there and talk to your friends, even yeah. if they get a little bit annoyed with you and they're like, oh, talk about your crazy internet money, your funny monopoly money. I get really pissed off, especially when the monopoly money is brought up. Because then, oh, and yeah. I'm like, "You are talking about monopoly money, bro." Yeah, okay. the, but the fiat yeah, is really the you're monopoly. planting seeds in people, mm -hmm. just like with your kids. You know, they, I, yeah. they you don't think they're listening, and then when they're twenty something and they hit a crisis, they'll tell you, "You know what? You were right. I, I you know, I, I, I remember what you said, and I did this, and it worked." You know, it, you plant the seeds. Just keep talking. Get that in, pe in people's minds, and then whenever they do see something that affects them or whatever it is that, that flips the switch, they're going to have that, that memory of what you told them. You know, the information that you gave them is going to give them what they need to be able to, to really learn from what they're seeing. Whether Let me throw this out, Sean, to you, because I think what's more important is to protect those like yourself that do know truth, because it is very frustrating to the point where you'll start to listen to the fools, right? Or you'll doubt yourself, have self-doubt because everyone around you is a fool. And you sometimes we don't even know it. Like you've got the golden ticket, the understanding, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is the time to go find new friends. And I'm going to say this from experience. Uh, I've said it on my channel many times. I made my first million when I was uh, in my early 20s through real estate. I became an accredited investor. And so every time somebody rolled their eyes at me, and I was just, I wasn't bragging. Now I'm telling you to give an example of my life. Um, I never spoke unless I thought I was the expert in the room, right? If, if I'm mm -hmm. talking about real estate, it's because I own 10 homes. And none of my friends even knew that. They were mocking and mocking. And finally, I got to the point, especially with crypto, because your net worth does balloon in times of boom times. We all, you know, we lived through 2017. We know what that's like, right? Mm -hmm. Um at a certain point I go, what am I doing hanging out with you fools? And, and it's just like, I, I and, and it's good for your heart and your peace of mind. And, and Sean, it's time to take it to the next level. It's like, let's stop worrying about the people that are always doubting us. Let's take our truth to the world and let the people in other countries or other neighborhoods next to you that have been begging for truth to grab onto it. And now your words have fruit, right? Because they're, they're multiplying. Let's walk away from the people. And I know it sounds harsh, man, it's time. If, if, if this uh, event that happened in 2020 and we got to pick our words right carefully didn't ta teach you anything other than one thing. And that was, I need new business partners. I need new friends. And there's certain people in my family walk away because when things get rough, it's going to be rough. So that's what I want to do. Yeah. Human beings are my family. I want to help a million, 2 million, 10 million people. And if that means having to walk away from somebody in my life, that's a complete fool, then that's what's going to happen. I'm going to take when, a million people with me yeah. on this journey. When and somebody I, shows you who they are, believe them. Exactly. And yeah. it's, right. that's the important thing. You know, everybody, we got love for our family. I got love for human beings too. Like I say, I don't right. care what sex you are, what, you know, gender. Oh gosh, it's getting stupid. <laughs> what color you are. I don't care about any of that crap. Right. I care about people that want to help themselves and help others. And that's mm -hmm. the only way we're going to take back this world. I, believe I, I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. But just know that you're, you, even if you don't see the fruit right away, you did plant a seed. That is true. And you are you are absolutely right. Something yeah. else, and you can once you've done that, you've done all you can do. That's right. But but then it's up to them. But you've done your part, you know. That's right. And I had a friend, a friend of mine is like, look, man, I can't go to the go to Seven Eleven. I can't fill my gas tank up with the Bitcoin. Yeah. 
And I, before, rather than argue, I was like, but dude, if you had a bar of gold, you can't go and fill your tank up at 7-Eleven with a bar of gold either. It actually you, can with Bitcoin. You and I you both know you put it on a car. Gold is worth money. You, you'll admit that. Yeah. And then that was, he's like, well, well, that is true. You know, but, I was like, it's the same thing. Well, but technically you can't, you can't put a dollar in your gas can tank either, right? The only thing we're talking about is what currency is the, the gas station going to take. Yeah. So let's put it this way. I would rather have an asset right now that's holding value alongside of, of inflation that all I have to do if I need a gallon of gas, I just go down to the bank or go down to the exchange and trade it in for currency, fiat currency, because mm -hmm. I'd rather that. I mean, think about it. Gold was sitting at uh, 16 or 1550 in 2020 before January 2020 when all this started it's now sitting at 1850 and yet all people care about is yeah but it, it's come down See, what, this is a basic brand? a basic thing people don't know the difference between currency and money yeah mm -hmm. that's the, like, the most basic 101 and that's the thing that people need to first learn yeah you know what, what is, is money, money versus mm -hmm. what is currency and you can fill right. your tank with currency but you can't really fill it with money yeah and but money is what actually has value Yep. Um, and we saw that in Venezuela, the fact that toilet paper itself had a bigger value as money than the paper that bought it. But only among the poor people and the people that were not prepared. The wealthy people had stuff and, and their gold literally paid cash for houses. During but, you, that but you would use more bills, more paper yeah. to buy the toilet paper. You would be True. better off wiping your butt with the money. You'd have more of it, you know. Um, and True, but again, well. it's from the mentality of a poor person that sees uh, a collapse that way. My thing is the, the guy that had gold sitting in a vault and had some toilet paper and had some uh, food. He had gold, exactly. He sat back I and had, took the gold and bought the real estate from everybody. I have friends online. whose families are, were in Venezuela. Yeah. And they worked their whole life. They saved up. And in the bank, they had like $120,000 for retirement. Yeah. And literally within months, yeah, they had that's nothing to happen here. And, but and what about them finding all this gold all over the world right now? Like the gold that was found in Uganda, the gold that was found in Spain. You're, you're talking about in the ground, right? Yeah. It's perfect. Try and wait till you find out how long it takes to get it out of the ground. Yeah. yeah. See, people, and just so you know, those news stories, we already knew the gold was there. They like to put it out because they don't want you buying gold because they're freaking out. Okay. Because like I said, gold's down from what? 22,050 bucks, let's say, right? To 1850. Okay. Well, in that amount of time, we're in bear market territory in the last 90 days. 90 days. Yeah, it took down gold. What? Like not even 10%. And uh, but the stock markets are down 2025. You've got cryptocurrency down way more than that. So the whole game is, is everything's collapsing, right? You want what's collapsing the least. And then what you do is you take that and you go buy the assets that are even dirt. Oh, the Bitcoin to altcoin ratio. You guys know this. As Bitcoin crashes 50 percent, what do the altcoins do? They crash 80 percent, right? Yeah. So would you rather be holding Bitcoin during a crash and go? Litecoin's looking like it's on sale. Boom, yes. pop over to that, right? right? And that's the whole example right now of gold. But the thing is, gold hasn't made a move yet. So central planners around the world are freaking out. And ironically, they're buying it up. Governments like Russia, China, there's yeah. governments all around the world that are buying up gold. Turkey, they've been maybe. buying up gold for a long time. Exactly, you know? but they're starting to pick up pace, yeah. right? So they're printing their money into hyperinflation to go buy gold. And then at the end, that's what we're going to be left with. So they're putting out this narrative. Hey, look, there's a bunch of gold. Gold's... What are you looking at? It's it's all over the place. Yeah, right. Okay. Until you need it. Also, if you uh, want to buy precious metals, gold, uh, you can go to uh, moneymetals.com. Links in the description. If you use the code Sean, they give you free silver. So you get like S E A N. A S E A N. Yeah, the right way. They give you a, a I think it's a Paul Revere coin that they're giving away this month. Just use that in the code. You have to just buy a hundred dollars worth. It's any kind of metal. Also, I buy which I've given uh, Lisa, you know, a bunch of these. I can give these away. On my channel, it's copper, and this is a. This oh, it's nice. I'll do. Yeah, I buy. Yeah. I used to buy them, you know, as, as just to give away to people to, to you know, and, and coins, copper coins, just to, to to my nephews and nieces, and for people to start, you know, thinking about precious metals and and, but now they actually have a value. Yep. Copper's actually like this. This is going up, That's which right. is never why I even got it. Um, but yeah, one but, copper penny is actually worth three cents, isn't it? Yeah, uh, copper and nickel. Nickel is worth a, a ton more. As it, uh, Westwood says, you go in a bank, buy a hundred dollars worth of nickels, you walk out, like you, you know, you made a hundred bucks. Yeah, you're right. <laughs>
Well, hey guys, I don't want to jam yeah. this early, but yeah. I, I do got a jam. Sorry. Thank about that. you for having. Thank you for coming on. Great hanging out with you. Please, if you're you know if you're subscribed to me and Lisa, go over and uh, subscribe to Economic Ninja. Thank you. He just works his butt off. Puts yeah. out short stuff, not even what? that long. Very, very to the point. Very entertaining. Is and he's not goofy. But and timely, and fun to watch, and super mm -hmm. informative every day. Thank you. It was good hanging out with you. Good hanging out with all y'all. <laughs> hey, uh, there you go. Woo! We're out. You guys take care. See y'all in the next video.